North Korea, a nation ruled by the Kim dynasty, stands as an enigma with its unique practices and tightly controlled information. From the intriguing traffic enforcers to the unusual basketball regulations, join us as we delve into these lesser-known facets and uncover the secret things that only exist in North Korea. 25. Traffic Beauties In the bustling streets of Pyongyang, North Korea, an unusual sight captures the attention of locals and visitors alike the traffic beauties. These charming female traffic wardens, officially known as traffic security officers, are not just guiding vehicles, they've become iconic figures in the city. Carefully chosen for their looks, they wear close-fitting blue uniforms and direct traffic with precision and energy. However, there's more to this role than meets the eye. These traffic ladies face unique rules. They must be single, retire at the age of 26, and leave the job if they marry. These women have become a favorite subject for tourists and journalists, and there's even a dedicated fan site celebrating their charm. As they march through the intersections, these traffic beauties not only ensure road safety, but also add a touch of glamour to the streets of Pyongyang. 24. Limited Haircuts Imagine your hairstyle being strictly regulated by the government, with Kim Jong-un's iconic looks serving as a model for all men. North Korea enforces a list of 10 to 18 state-sanctioned hairstyles, and the Kim Jong-un haircut law specifies that men's hair should be between 0.3 and 1.9 inches long. Kim Jong-un's hairstyles, ranging from a buzz cut to a flat top, pay homage to his grandfather, Kim Il-sung symbolizing legitimacy and leadership. While there's no mandate for people to adopt Kim Jong-un's hairstyle, a growing trend sees North Korean men imitating his look, possibly driven by his rising popularity. Women also face strict regulations, with 15 approved styles based on marital status. These controls on personal appearance add to the repressive image of North Korea. 23. Three-Generation Punishment the Three Generations of Punishment policy in North Korea, instituted in 1950, is a severe and inhumane measure where individuals convicted of political crimes face punishment, extending to their children and grandchildren. This results in generations enduring a lifetime in prison, born and raised in confinement due to their alleged familial guilt. The policy, spanning 75 to 90 years, violates human rights and is condemned globally. 22. Limited access to internet. Internet restrictions are driven by the government's fear of external influences and a lack of robust infrastructure. The regime tightly controls information to prevent citizens from bypassing state-controlled media and communicating with the outside world. Claims of the US involvement in shutting down North Korea's internet are challenging to verify. Visitors face strict laws, including restrictions on bringing in religious or political material. The country remains hidden on Google Maps, reinforcing its secretive nature. North Korea monitors citizens extensively, with smartphones facing bans and disappearing due to economic challenges. Despite isolation, there are indications of iPhone usage. Television sets operate on specific systems, preventing access to foreign broadcasts. 21 underground markets. In the face of a severe national famine in the 1990s, North Korea witnessed a notable departure from its established communist principles. The introduction of internal markets served as a pragmatic response, circumventing the constraints imposed by the state-controlled economic model. Notably, women assumed pivotal roles, driving trade and household production amidst the scarcity. Internationally, North Korea engaged in covert activities such as currency counterfeiting, arms trade, and drug trafficking to fund its nuclear ambitions. These pursuits, however, incurred stern UN sanctions. Despite the government's public denial of involvement, mounting evidence suggests state-sponsored operations. This paper endeavors to unravel the complexities surrounding North Korea's economic dynamics, drawing insights from defector testimonies, accounts from trading partners, and satellite data. The narrative challenges the prevailing perception of a strictly communist state, revealing a nuanced economic evolution shaped by survival strategies and adaptability within the evolving global economic landscape. 20. 
Making international calls is a crime. Making international phone calls is strictly prohibited, reflecting the government's tight control on communication. Amnesty International reported that the mobile phone service, serving over 3 million subscribers, only allows local calls. Access to the internet is limited, and ordinary citizens face severe consequences for attempting to contact family members who defected. Many North Koreans facing these restrictions resort to using smuggled goods like Chinese mobile phones. However, a recent crackdown employing surveillance devices and soldiers has heightened risks. Those caught making illegal calls may endure arrests, fines, or even incarceration in political prison camps. 19. Basketball Rules The North Korean Basketball League NKL has unique rules that add an element of unpredictability to the game. Crafted by Kim Jong-il and possibly adjusted by Kim Jong-un, these regulations bring in some peculiar aspects. For instance, slam dunks are awarded three points to enhance fan excitement. Three-pointers earn four points only if they smoothly swish through the net without touching the rim. A distinctive rule deducts one point for each missed free throw, emphasizing accuracy. An intriguing feature is the allocation of eight points for field goals made in the last three seconds, injecting an element of unpredictability. Unlike conventional basketball norms, North Korea allows games to end in ties. The six professional teams in the NKL are governed by eccentric rules, diverging from mainstream leagues like the NBA. 18. Having a Bible is sin. Possessing a Bible is considered a sin in this context. The authorities view Christianity as a potential threat, creating an atmosphere of fear and extensive surveillance. Approximately 200,000 to 400,000 Christians bravely adhere to their faith, risking imprisonment simply for owning a Bible. The surveillance system infiltrates even their private lives. Within families, trust becomes scarce due to the fear of betrayal and reporting. A substantial 25% of these courageous Christians find themselves imprisoned, subjected to torture and forced labor. Despite these harsh conditions, secret churches persist in the shadows, demonstrating unwavering faith against all odds. The difficulties they endure make it nearly impossible for them to gather for worship. 17. Female Military In the North Korean military, women have been part of mandatory military service since 2015. While men are required to serve in the military for a period of 10 years, women are obligated to serve until the age of 23. This initiative aims to strengthen the country's military forces. Statistics from 1980 show that women constitute a significant portion of the workforce in various sectors, including agriculture, industry, and forestry. Although North Korea officially advocates for gender equality, the reality indicates that traditional gender patterns persist. Women often perform lighter tasks, while men are more frequently engaged in heavy labor. 16. Kim Jong-un's Female Entourage Kim Jong-un's female entourage often appears in official photos released by North Korea's state media. These images portray the North Korean leader interacting with various groups, including women in military and sports, as well as war veterans. The photos typically showcase Kim Jong-un's engagements with women in different capacities, such as guiding military drills, attending celebrations, or visiting factories. These images aim to highlight his leadership, involvement in various sectors, and the support he receives from different segments of the population, including women. The portrayal is carefully curated through state-controlled media, offering a specific narrative about Kim Jong-un's popularity and connection with the people. 15. Limited TV Channels North Korea has recently undergone a television revolution, transitioning from a single channel to multi-channel broadcasting with the advent of digital and streaming services. The main channel, KCTV, is like the all-in-one package, news, propaganda, and of course, shows about Kim Jong-un. They run from 3 p.m. to around 10.30 p.m. daily, with key news updates in the evening. Then there's Ryong Namsan TV with educational shows and movies in English, Russian, and Chinese. It started three days a week, 
but recently beefed up to five days, TV focuses on educational programming and movies in multiple languages for university students, broadcasting three to five days a week, running from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mansudai TV is the arts and culture one. It used to be a weekend thing, but now they're throwing in Fridays too. This shift is aimed at making state media more appealing amidst competition from foreign content. These changes signify North Korea's evolving approach to broadcasting. 14. One leader to vote. North Korea's elections are quite a spectacle. With a reported 99.97% voter turnout, you'd think they had a real contest going on. But surprise, 100% of the votes landed in Kim Jong-un's basket. Talk about a predictable outcome. The whole process feels like a scripted play. The ruling party picks candidates, voters go through the motions, and the Supreme People's Assembly nods along to whatever laws Kim suggests. It's not exactly a hub of democratic debate. What's amusing is they label it a democracy, but with no real choices, it's more like a staged performance. The cost of this show is a mystery, but with North Korea's economy feeling the pinch, one wonders why they bother. Some say it's about keeping up the appearance of legitimacy for the Kim dynasty, but who can say for sure? 13. Power cut every night. In the face of rapid progress in weapons development under leader Kim Jong-un, North Korea grapples with chronic energy shortages, as evident in satellite images of the country at night. The capital, Pyongyang, remains dimly lit, and overall electricity production is significantly below its capacity. The Wonsan No. 5 hydropower station operates at about 40% of its 60,000 kilowatts capacity, reflecting the nation's struggle to meet energy demands. Historically, North Korea boasted a robust energy infrastructure with superior generation capacities in East Asia. However, after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, the country lost access to crucial resources and technical expertise, causing a substantial decline in electricity generation. Currently, hydroelectricity contributes 73% to the North's power production, with coal ranking second. The shortages have a direct impact on citizens, as only approximately one in three North Koreans has access to electricity. Authorities allocate power based on priority. 12. Cycling Cycling has a unique history shaped by political decisions. Despite its name suggesting a flat terrain, Pyongyang, the capital, wasn't bicycle-friendly until 1990. The Workers' Party of Korea officially banned cycling, deeming it incompatible with traffic flow. Instead, the country aimed to prioritize cars as the primary mode of transportation. This ban persisted until the early 90s, when the scarcity of available vehicles led to a revision of the doctrine. Bicycles, though expensive, gained popularity, and today, official statistics indicate that each family owns one or two bikes. The predominant local brand, Song Chong Gang, offers practical features like step-through frames and handlebar baskets. Second-hand bikes from Japan are also preferred. Until 2012, women were prohibited from cycling due to social and modesty concerns, but the ban was often ignored. Obstacles like mandatory sidewalk usage and dismounting at crossings persisted until 2015 when dedicated cycle paths were introduced in Pyongyang to protect pedestrians. 11. Technology for cyber attacks. Regardless of international sanctions, North Korea has managed to exploit loopholes and utilize U.S. technology for cyber attacks. According to a report by Recorded Future, a threat intelligence company, North Korean hackers, have employed technology from Microsoft, Apple, and Samsung in major cyber offensives, including the infamous 2017 WannaCry ransomware attack and the 2014 Sony hack. The researchers discovered an overwhelming presence of American software in North Korea's network, revealing the regime's adeptness at circumventing trade sanctions over the past 30 years. Loopholes, fake companies, and shell entities like Glocom have facilitated the acquisition of US and South Korean technology. In spite of consequences faced by companies caught sending technology to North Korea, such as ZTE, the exploitation of gaps in sanctions persists, posing a threat to global cybersecurity.
Recorded futures findings indicate the use of devices like Apple's iPhone X and Microsoft's Windows 10, obtained through legal and illegal channels, contributing to North Korea's cyber capabilities. The lack of a standardized definition for luxury goods in global sanctions further complicates efforts to curb such activities, allowing North Korea to leverage technology for cyber warfare. 10. Foreign media not allowed. In the mysterious realm of North Korea, a secret universe of foreign entertainment quietly rebels against official bans. Despite the regime's strict no-go on foreign films, the ingenious citizens have found sneaky ways to get their hands on illicit content. TVs and DVD players are more common than you'd think, challenging the idea that the country is completely cut off. Picture this, USB sticks and micro SD cards acting as modern-day treasure chests, holding a black market collection of foreign flicks. Take Yonmi Park, for example. She fondly recalls sneaking peeks at pirated versions of blockbusters like Titanic, giving us a rare snapshot of the everyday lives concealed behind the regime's carefully constructed facade. The recent crackdown on illegal videos, especially after the alleged South Korean spy saga, shows the regime's growing paranoia and its desperate attempts to control the narrative. Despite the risks, North Koreans continue to dive into forbidden stories. Analysts view this clandestine consumption as an opportunity for external actors to influence change within North Korea, challenging the regime's narrative from within. 9. All media controlled. North Korea's media tightly controls information, presenting a sanitized image of leaders like Kim Jong-il. The regime's influence extends to radios and TVs, pre-tuned and regulated, with citizens resorting to unregistered radios for foreign broadcasts. Internet access is restricted primarily for the elite. Mobile phones, banned initially, were reintroduced in 2008, finding popularity among the affluent in Pyongyang. This environment suppresses dissent, fostering an isolated nation where the regime's narrative dominates, perpetuating a controlled and constrained society. 8. Military service is compulsory. The 2023 CIA World Factbook indicates a noteworthy adjustment in North Korea's mandatory military service. Men are now required to serve up to 10 years, while women face an 8-year obligation. Commencing at 17 years old, conscription is obligatory for both genders, albeit with exemptions for political elite's offspring and individuals with unfavorable songbun social status. Despite North Korea's assertion to the UN that military enlistment is voluntary, practical implementation suggests a de facto compulsory system. Enthusiasm among young individuals appears significant, possibly stemming from societal motivations and enhanced post-service employment prospects. Many of them join in the hopes of being regularly fed. 7. Banned laughing, drinking and shopping. Kim Jong-il, the former leader of North Korea, held power for 17 years until his death on December 17, 2011, due to a heart attack. Annually, a rigorous 11-day mourning period is enforced, and this year, it extends to 11 days to mark the 10th anniversary. Citizens endure prohibitions on laughter, alcohol consumption, and leisure activities with arrests for non-compliance. Grocery shopping is even restricted on the death anniversary. State media pays tribute to Kim Jong-il, emphasizing unity under his son, Kim Jong-un. Law enforcement has a month-long special duty to crack down on rule violations. In Pyongyang, citizens observe three minutes of silence and vehicles signal respect with horns. The strict measures extend to personal milestones like birthdays, highlighting the lasting impact of Kim Jong-il's 17-year rule on the country's cultural and social fabric. 6. Declining population. In a rare move, Kim Jong-un addressed the low birth rate during the National Meeting of Mothers, emphasizing the need to prevent population decline. The total fertility rate was reported at 1.8 in 2023, prompting concerns. Historically, North Korea faced a declining birth rate in the 90s due to a major famine. Government responses included universal education, late marriages, and contraception availability. Efforts to reverse the trend include urging more children and providing incentives for larger families. Kim's emotional appeal at the meeting highlighted the importance of countering the declining birth rate and instilling communist values. North Korea's birth rate remains higher than some neighbors, showcasing the unique interplay of economic constraints, societal changes, and government policies. 5. 
poverty. Within the mysterious landscape of the country, a profound narrative of widespread poverty unfolds. Economic challenges, accentuated by militarization, persist amid global scrutiny and restrictions. Hunger becomes pervasive, fueled by the nation's military endeavors, and exacerbated by international sanctions. Living conditions shrouded in secrecy reveal serious human rights violations, creating a divide between the elite and the majority. Key facts highlight the depth of poverty, from percent of the population below the poverty line to unconventional government initiatives like the giant rabbit feeding program. In a peculiar turn of events, the North Korean government reached out to German breeder Karl Smolinski, exploring the possibility of utilizing his giant bunnies as a potential solution to hunger, showcasing the surreal nature of attempts to address the dire socio-economic issues within the nation. 4. Forced Labor North Korean workers are often victims of forced labor abroad, especially in European Union countries. Since Kim Jong-un assumed power in 2011, the number of workers sent abroad has significantly increased as a means to acquire foreign currency and circumvent international sanctions. At its peak in 2015, it was estimated that around 100,000 North Koreans worked in over 40 countries, often under harsh conditions and with low wages. These workers frequently become victims of forced labor, enduring long workdays of 10 to 13 hours with minimal pay and poor conditions. International sanctions have not fully halted this practice, and efforts to hold those responsible accountable often face obstacles. This issue raises serious human rights concerns, prompting calls for global action to protect these workers from forced labor. 3. Ban on having same name Yet another peculiar directive from the government involves urging women who share the same name as Kim Jong-un's daughter, Ju Ai, to change their identities. This directive adds another layer of oddity to the already unique practices of the regime. One might question the arbitrary nature of these restrictions and the extent to which the authorities are willing to go to enforce such unusual regulations. This move is perceived as part of the regime's strategy to isolate Kim Jong-un's daughter and foster an air of mystique around her. Ju Ai, who is around 9 to 10 years old, recently appeared alongside her father at a military parade, sparking speculation about her potential role as a successor. This development is in line with North Korea's historical practice of prohibiting people from using the same names as its leaders and their immediate families, reinforcing the regime's emphasis on respecting its leaders. 2. No Western fashion allowed Efforts to counter Western fashion trends have been observed, with a particular focus on women in their 20s and 30s. The Socialist Patriot Youth League is spearheading this crackdown, targeting women who choose to wear long hair, dye it brown, or don clothing adorned with large foreign letters. The campaign also extends to women wearing curve-hugging pants deemed to have a capitalist flair. Offenders find themselves waiting on the roadside as youth patrols conduct searches, and upon discovery, they are required to submit written confessions at the Youth League's office. The release is contingent upon donning more culturally appropriate clothing. This initiative, unveiled during a nationwide educational session, underscores North Korea's commitment to eradicating foreign influences on its socialist principles. Even seemingly innocuous choices, like wearing shorts, are scrutinized and can lead to arrests, particularly affecting women who often serve as breadwinners in families. 1. Separate Yush Calendar in North Korea, the adoption of the Jucha calendar in 1997 introduced a unique temporal perspective, aligning years with the birth of the nation's founder, Kim Il-sung. This alternative system sharply contrasts with the global Gregorian calendar, with Jucha 1 marking 1912. The Jusha calendar has permeated various segments of North Korean society since its inception in 1997, from official documents and newspapers to transportation and birth certificates. However, the economic challenges currently faced by the country have turned even government-issued calendars into symbols of wealth, further highlighting societal differences. 
Inflation has led to a significant price surge, making these calendars unaffordable to many citizens. The disparity in prices, along with variations in quality and content, serves as a strong illustration of economic inequalities within the isolated nation. Such an unconventional approach to time is unusual and inappropriate, emphasizing the character of dictatorship and making it peculiar that the government determines the past through its own dynasty rather than through an objective history of civilization. What is the weirdest fact about North Korea? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.